Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm painting on this wood panel with watercolors. I've done this before and I've absolutely loved it but I've learned a lot of things along the way about painting with watercolors but about also how to do it best when it comes to painting on wood. So so yes this is going to be a little bit of an experiment with testing out some new supplies and trying it out but this uh, has a little notch where it has this kind of kickstand that'll help it so that it can stand up on a tabletop. Now I actually use this to do a little test because I know that I do want to have some line work in this piece, but I wanted to see if it would actually bleed into the wood grain of the wood and it does. So my plans are actually instead of painting or instead of doing the line work directly on the wood as a first layer and then cover it with my secret weapon, which I'll tell you about in a second, I actually decided that I'm going to do this first layer first of the watercolor ground, the secret weapon, <laughs> but I'm going to do this first to hopefully seal off the wood. It will seal off the wood and it's going to create a surface for the watercolors to be able to adhere to. This actually is a really cool thing. I'm surprised I haven't found it before or used it before, but it's a completely transparent, or at least it should be watercolor ground. So I can put this on any surface and then it can be a surface that I can paint with watercolors on it. So I'm going to put that first then I'm going to ink it and then I'll be painting on top of it. And I think that that's probably going to keep it from bleeding into the grain because it's going to create the ceiling layer for the watercolors as well as the inks. And it does say that this should be left on for up to 24 to 48 hours before you apply watercolors. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quickly first and then let it sit for a little while and then I'll get back to you guys. But I will show you really quick what I'm actually going to transfer on here. So I have this sketch right here that I actually did a while ago, but I'm, I've been wanting to paint him for since I sketched him. But what I'm going to do is I've put a little bit of cold erase pencil on the back. Hopefully this will transfer okay. I wanted something that wasn't nearly as smudgy as regular graphite. So I'm going to try using that as a, as a transfer medium. So once I have the the watercolor ground down and I'm ready to transfer this onto the wood I will just use this kind of a method where I can trace over it and then imprint that down and then I'll do the inking and then I'll see if I can clean up any leftover blue from this transfer process. And then I brushed on the watercolor ground. I did make sure to use a bit of an older brush, one that I wouldn't be too sad if it totally ruined, but it washed out completely so it seems pretty okay. I still wouldn't use a brand new brush or one that's expensive or anything like that. But uh, I did want to make sure that I used one that would not lose hairs into the ground as I was putting it down. I do have a few brushes like that that'll just shed into it. So, so yes, I made sure to pick the right brush for that. And inking on this wood was actually kind of a mixture of really pleasant and very mildly irritating. So, so because it still has the wood grain, this ground does not completely fill in all of the nooks and crannies of the, the wood grain. It meant that there were certain areas or lines that I drew that suddenly became really bumpy, but for the most part, it seemed pretty controllable. I got mostly sharp, clean lines that I wanted. So it was actually just really fun to be able to work on a completely different surface like this and see how it would take the this kind of ink and I, I was happy with the results. It wasn't too far from what I'm able to get with paper. It took a little bit more time because I had to build up the line work a little bit more slowly than on paper. I think also part of that is because, and this is just a guess, but I think it was reactivating and mixing up a little bit with the ground underneath it. And you know how when you draw on something that has like a coating on it, it oftentimes will clog up your, your micron pen a little bit. And this did not do it very much, just a little bit every once in a while. I'd have to clean it off on a scratch sheet of paper. Background was actually kind of an up and down moment for me. Well, maybe more in the reverse, down and then up. So when I first did the couple of washes, I was envisioning this paint really granulating and creating some really cool effects where it would just mingle with the grain on the wood. And, and in the end, it didn't really granulate and separate as much as I had hoped it would because I didn't have any scratch pieces of wood to test on. I wasn't really able to, to see what it would look like before I applied it. So when I first did that like first wash, it seemed pretty modeled, but not really having the impact that I wanted. It kind of just felt a little bit more dirty almost rather than intentional. But, but then I went in with another brush that has a little bit more of like a, a texturing effect if I just dip it straight down onto my canvas and I built up 
the darkness around the bottom edge of this and then it became a lot more intentional looking that texture that was there felt much more directional like it had a meaning and a purpose and where it was dark at the bottom and lighter on the top it just all came together a lot better i also mixed in a few different paints to the bottom as i was working on that so the main color that i used for the background was my shadow violet the one that i just got from daniel smith and then i added a little bit more of my paints gray to deepen it up a little bit and towards the edges i did make sure that i got this really like thick rich application of the paint i didn't water it down very much i just dropped in this really raw version of the paint and let it mingle into that semi damp surface but there is one big thing that i need to do a bit more research on and figure out if it's fixable or if it's something that's just kind of part of the process but immediately once i started putting on a lot of water in the background it started following the grain of the wood so it was i i don't know if bleeding is quite quite the right word for it because it it may have just been following the the grooves that was in the surface or it could have been bleeding out into the area around it but but in any case it did mean that there were a lot of streaks of other colors that streaked into other areas that that color wasn't supposed to be in and i decided that i was just going to embrace it for this piece i'm going to let it really create a very like wood look to it something that's unique to this piece and to the substrate that i'm working on but in the future i would like to see if a thicker application of the ground will help it better or if multiple layers will help it I don't know i think that in theory at least i'm hoping that multiple layers if i build it up enough it'll cover up the wood grain hopefully and then it will create one solid layer that i will be able to paint on and it won't have this this effect but but in this particular piece in this application i was happy with it actually at the very end i think it ends up looking really cool because of the because of how many layers of watercolor that i end up putting on top of it there's basically paint throughout all of the wood grain all the way down so his face has like these very tiny little vertical lines of basically the same color that's that's in the shadows of his face and then each shape has that look so it's like everywhere has this this vertical line texture to it i don't know i i actually really did like it it's just moving forward i would like to be able to control it and i could add it if i wanted it to have that kind of wood grain look to it but then if i wanted it to be really sharp and clean ideally i'd be able to stop it from doing that so so we'll see more research will come working on his hair is definitely where my color picking choices got a little away from me i did have a color comp that i was working off of and i had the raw wood color as his hair in that color comp but then i started adding this like what i imagined to be a darker version of the wood for shadows but really it ended up being a very saturated yellow so once i finished that it just kind of made his whole hair look very yellow and blonde and it really stood out from this very blue skin color and then this more purpley kind of grayish background so it just felt really jarring and complimentary almost with his skin so that part i was like okay that was a big mistake so luckily the wood is one pretty forgiving as far as reactivating and then mopping up a lot of the colors but also it allows me to do a lot of layers on top of it so that i can build up to where i want it to be without the wood buckling so after i did that yellow i actually went in with a couple more layers of washed out green that would help counteract that and bring it back into more of a cool family and then i also went eventually in with some of the blue that same blue that i had in the shadows of his face i brought that into the shadows of his hair very slightly i didn't want his hair to become blue i just wanted it to have a little bit more depth in the shadows and since the color of his hair was so diverted from the original plans i did have to go back over the line work for its hair because at the beginning i had this like light brown color for all of the line work that way it would match the color of the wood a little bit more but it kind of really stood out from the green it became very jarring and not harmonious with the rest of the shape so i actually do have a dark green it's a copic multi-liner and i went back over all the lines in his hair and i was really happy about that because it did feel a lot more finished and complete and his hair looked right rather than like a course correction <laughs> I find that a lot of times there's just like a simple change like that that can make something look like it was an accident 
to looking intentional. And I do have this original painting available at my shop. He is actually ready to be hung right on the wall or sat on your desktop. And I also have a link to my Patreon. So right now I have a free enamel pin giveaway. Not giveaway, it's for everyone who has signed up at the $10 tier or up by the end of this month. So that's June 30th. So if you like a free enamel pin, as well as the postcard of the month and all the other exclusive goodies that are over on my Patreon, then make sure to go check that out and sign up. And uh, that is about it for today. So I'll be back next week with some more art videos. So thank you guys so much for watching and especially for all my patrons on Patreon. You guys are absolutely amazing. So thank you so much. And that's it for today. <laughs>